Hi folks, Mr. Teslonian back here again. I've been working on the cathode ray project that produces x-rays and this time I want to show you how to build an anode ray tube. An anode ray tube is basically the same as a cathode ray tube. The only difference is in the center of your cathode here, which this is right there, in the center of the cathode you notice there's a little hole right there. That little hole, when this fires the electron beam uh, at our anode target, so this will be sitting just inside the glass right there, approximately what you can see right there in the video shot, when we fire an electron beam at our anode target over here, because electrons are a negative charge, what we get in the opposite direction is an ion beam or a proton beam. That ion beam will hit against this and actually be visible coming out the center of that little hole right there. Without the hole, you can't really find them. You don't see them. Uh, with the hole in the center of the cathode, you do get to see them, or multiple holes. They're also called canal rays because they showed up only after creating these canals for it to go through in the cathode. So what we're going to do here, basically, is install all this in one of the old cathode ray tubes. I've kind of modified it slightly so that we can make an anode ray tube out of it. Uh, the actual cathode itself right here is just a piece of uh, nail flange. Basically, it's a nail flange for construction. And if you notice, if I hold that over it, I basically just found one of those holes, drew a line from that hole all the way down without getting any more holes on there, and just left a very, very thin a uh, little piece of metal there all the way down with a circular target with a hole in it. Uh, what this little white piece is that you see right here is actually an insulator chunk from a piece of uh, copper wire. So I stripped the insulator off some wire and actually slid that from this side up over that. And what that'll do is create an insulator between this and our glass which is pretty uh, necessary to make sure this all works. So what we're going to do now is actually take this thing. You'll notice I've got a little bit of a bend and an arc to it. Hopefully I've maintained the same bend I've already preset on there. What that allow us to do is actually slide that in to the cathode ray tube, or, or anode ray tube as it's becoming. I should be able to pull that out the bottom of the hole and get that ready to go. Alright, so there it is set down inside of our tube here. I'm going to hard mount this with some glue here in a moment. I just wanted to show you exactly how I did that. And if I can get that to line up with the camera lens there just right, when that's perfectly centered, you'll notice it doesn't touch any of the glass inside of there. It'll have that nice insulator coming through the hole there. And so I'm just going to mount that now inside of that, and that'll be our actual uh, cathode. And that'll produce our anode rays out of the back there through that hole. Uh, so what I'm also going to leave on here but that's from our last project is this end cap. It's pretty difficult to get a good vacuum in here and later on I'm going to show you how to build a vacuum pump that'll work just fine for making these work really effectively. Uh, but what I'm going to do is leave this. I'm going to go ahead and reseal it the way I did previously and that'll give us basically an anti-anode. And if I'm not mistaken we should produce pretty good gamma rays from this. Uh, so if we can get everything set up just right and everything works I should be able to use our homemade Geiger counter and I should be able to indicate the presence of a radioactive uh, wavelength of the EM spectrum being created from the opposite side of our cathode even though we're firing electrical current between our anode and our cathode and that's actually the flow of the electrons. Over on this side we should get the flow of ions and we should be able to create gamma rays off of this side and x-rays off of this side. Okay, so real quick here, I've got everything glued back together. I just wanted to show you exactly what it looks like when it's actually kind of stable inside of there. Uh, the last thing i got to do is glue the end cap in after heating it up. So before I do that, I just want to show you an inside view, now that it's glued in there, exactly what that looks like. And maybe some of you have already kind of discovered that what I'm showing you is basically the fundamentals behind laser technology. Uh, these electron beams and ion beams that I'm showing you I'm not going to get too much more into depth on how and, and some of the differences, but this is the fundamental basics behind how laser technology works, especially the kind of lasers that uh, can actually burn through objects. So that is something I want. Like I said, I'm going to heat this thing up again with the torch. I'm going to set my lid in there with some glue, and we're going to try to get that to hold all on there with some kind of vacuum. And we're going to try this here in a later video to see exactly if we can get a reading from both our anode, our anti-anode, uh, both uh, a gamma ray production and an x-ray production from our anode ray tube. 